What's going on, everybody? It's electric. Everyone hates Tesla. And today we're going to be revealing technology analysis versus the stock analysis. So we've listened to Jim Cramer. We heard what this guy said of this portfolio and this hedge fund and this private equity. Forget what they talk about because they're always trying to analyze the stock. I want to analyze the technology and the service and the product. And that's what I love to do over here at Obstacles Opportunity and on Everyone Hates Tesla. So today we're going to actually zoom in and see what this wonderful lady has to say in Anastasia in tech. Let's get it. The robot event was one of the most cinematic technological presentations I've ever seen. Of course, lacking technical details, unfortunately, but I can infer a lot from what I've seen. And who doesn't like a great technological show? I even sacrificed my sleep today to watch it. As a I always don't like that. You know, people are like, give us the details. Like, yeah, let me give you the details on something that's like breaking technology that nobody else has. Let me just give you all the information. What do you want to know? I'm going to tell you everything about it. Like, maybe they'll play some things close to the chest. Hardware engineer with almost a decade experience in automotive industry. In today's video, I will be focusing on the engineering perspective, on the engineering aspects of these innovations, how Tesla is now entering a huge positive feedback loop, and how these innovations will disrupt automotive and robotics industries. The main announcement at the event was the cyber cap. Wild experience to just be in a car with no steering wheel, no pedals, no controls. So I hope this goes well. <laughs> The robotaxi market is expected to explode in the next years. This is a huge opportunity for Tesla, and this will change the economy of transportation. First of all, it will bring down the cost per mile from now roughly being $1 to $0.40 cents, all the way down to $0.05 cents with the RoboVan. And this has a huge impact on the entire automotive industry. This will change the way the cars are designed, sold and serviced. And guys, that might help you normies in transportation. So here goes the point where you're trying to fight the government and get them to demolish highways and build a public transportation system like in Europe. Maybe, maybe that will happen. Maybe it won't. But also, dun, 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 dun. This van will help you guys out. Five cents. That's cheap. Come on. Affordable transportation for the normies. And it looks good and stylish. And not only does it just drop you off on some route and you still got to ride a bike to make it to your point or all this other nonsense, but it could be more specific on the location. Possibly, right? I mean, I've been in the countries with actual trams and public transportation systems, but then I still got to be in Thailand, jumping on the back of a scooter, dodging in and out of traffic in order to get to my destination. That's how many clicks down the road. Like, come on. Or you're in Holland riding a bicycle. You got a bicycle at this point and a bicycle at that point because <laughs> the train can only take you so far. Let's continue. The thing is, today's car is built for an average use of a couple of hours per day, which is about 10 hours a week. And with that, it serves on average 12 years. Robot access will operate nearly nonstop, about 100 hours a week. This means the car will be used at least 10 times more. This extensive use will put a lot of pressure on the electronic system, on the chips in the car. And here we are not talking just about the hardware for, but the rest of the chips, like hundreds of chips in the car that are used to control safety features, advanced assistance, infotainment, all of them will wear out much faster. And you don't want to replace your car every year, right? Well, in fact, in the modern cars, 45% of the cost is accounted for electronics. That's because cars are full of chips and also they these automotive chips are very expensive. They're expensive because they are engineered to be very safe, to withstand very uh, different conditions like temperature variation from very cold to very hot, high humidity levels, vibrations, and so on. And nowadays... All so if that's the case, guys, NVIDIA is going to continue to do good, right? Because they're all on NVIDIA's dealios. Okay, cool. And so is Tesla. All these chips are designed with a 10 hours a week mission profile. In the robotaxi world, this will accelerate. This means we have to build all these electronics, all these chips to be 10 times more robust. And this is a big deal for the industry. We are actually talking about this transformation for the last decade, so the industry is prepared. You know, there are many design techniques can be used here. First of all, you can implement redundancy. We can also apply dynamic frequency and voltage scaling so that high voltage is applied only when it's needed, so the chips and the electronics wearing wearing out slower. Eventually, chips will become more complex, and this will result in higher R&D costs and testing costs. And this... Oh, man, I don't care what she's talking about. I want to talk about tweets. I don't care where the stock going. 
I don't care about the technical analysis. This girl's out here talking about engineering. I don't want to hear engineering. I don't want to hear about how he did a tweet in the morning and I ain't like it. This will apply to other car components as well. Service members, military families, and U.S. citizens overseas. That's how y'all like There's it. Still time That's how you like it. Go out there and vote, man. Vote for Elon. Actually, y'all need to vote so Elon don't get uh, slapped up by Camilla Harris and him. <laughs> he don't win in the edge for Trump, so uh, he's in too deep. Mikhail Pfeiffer, let's continue. Now, cyber caps will be delivered by the end of 2026, featuring the hardware for chip. But now Tesla is a... I don't know about all that, but I do know that it will be a nice product when it comes out. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference between Waymo and this. This is nice. We create the best products. It's like Apple, you know, Samsung's dope. It's cool. It's a good smartphone. Technically, it's actually better, but Apple's Apple, right? Most of you guys are Apple users. Stop the cat. Already working on building something more powerful, AI5 chip. It will be capable of 10 times more computing and of course, more latency and more throughput. For now, this computing power is actually much more than they need in the cars. But algorithms are keep evolving, and this chip have to serve them for the next five years at least. So they are intentionally over-engineering it a bit for the future. What's interesting? Elon mentioned that when the car is not used, the hardware can be used to build a distributed computing system. Now, let's reason a bit about these numbers. They estimate 100 million robot taxis on the road. Each of the car features a one kilowatt of power chip which is of course then has to be recalculated down to the computing power. This results in 100 gigawatt of distributed inference power. And this is quite a number. The biggest question, is it usable? Uh, you know, probably yes for their case, but you would need a really high communication speed. And you know, when we're talking about data centers, this is hundreds of gigabytes per second. And you can't expect this with a home Wi-Fi, right? So this all is a bit of a stretch. In general, Tesla is scaling up their computing to terawatt range. They are scaling up their data centers to prepare to do much more computing than today. As I mentioned, much more computing, much more computing needs much more energy. We produce products for energy services, and that won't be only Tesla. That'll be NVIDIA and everybody else involved in the AI game. We're here and we're already making profit in the energy game. The most profit. What? Now, it's not the majority of our revenue or a great portion of our revenue, but it's a great portion of our profit in what matters, profitability or revenue. Uh, both matter, but we definitely want the profit. We want it to come down in our favor. You can have high revenue and no profit, but if you got profit, that's good. And the product that we're offering is increasing. And our ability to build out more is increasing ever more. And the actual service of those energy departments and services and products that we have are delivering it, delivering for the future of AI. We're not only in the game, but we're also selling to the game. It's like owning a gold mine and then also selling the shovels and the wheelbarrows and the shifters. We're doing both. And I compromised my sleep a bit today to bring this video on time to you. So my mind is a bit I'm clear, but if you're enjoying it, please support me with a like, consider subscribing to yeah, yeah, yeah. what's interesting. By deploying robot access, Tesla is entering a powerful positive feedback loop because the number of miles driven will increase at least by a factor of 10. This will allow Tesla to collect a lot of real world data, and this will be their mode. The yeah, true. Real world data going with the artificial intelligence for the FSD. That's facts. Positive feedback in engineering defined mathematically as a positive loop gain around the cause and effect. When the loop gain is above one, there will be typically an exponential growth, which means basically the more you do, the more you become. The more cars you've deployed, the more data you can collect. And Just like anything, guys, right? The more data, the more you do, the more practice, the better you become. It's not a big thing. This will be crucial, not just for autonomous driving, but also for the training of humanoid robots. You know, companies like Boston Dynamics have great robots. Now look at this funny looking robot. Now all of a sudden that's the robot of the future and Elon's tripping and look at this robot. Not only does he look ugly, but he's underperforming. NVIDIA is working on Groot project. And for both of this. NVIDIA just in the virtual world, acting like they're doing something than everybody on their daily use. Projects. The biggest challenge is collecting data for the training and that's. And Boston dynamic has no potential to actually manufacture any of these robots like on a mass production, they don't have that. Like you don't even know if they could do that. Remember research and development guys, right? 
and then you still have to get the suppliers, get the components, and then manufacture them and distribute them. Do they have the ability to do that? Like, come on, guys, stop the cap. Stop the cap. Stop the propaganda. All right. Only Tesla has the capacity and the actual proven track record to complete these tasks. Tesla has a huge advantage here. Talking of robots, during the V robot event, robots were walking among people. And I think it's going to take time until we get used to that. But these are designed to revolutionize households and factories. Goldman Sachs projects that the humanoid robot market will reach $38 billion by 20. And look, I'm not even worried about actual families and households. That's very ambitious for Tesla and Elon to provide that information. But if they would have actually spoke a little bit to actually its use in the commercial sector, it would have been ridiculous, right? The public and the private commercial sector, that's where it's really going to show its performance. But yeah, all right, normies can have it in a house too. But a lot of normies are going to be like, not me, not me. Yeah, you would have been the same normie talking about, I ain't getting in the car. I ain't flying on a plane. And now... That's what you guys do. To 35. And I read the full report and the key takeaway is that the biggest part of these robots will be high spec robots like those from Tesla and figure AI. Their estimation that 6.5 million robots will be sold in 2035. In my opinion, it's a bit an um, optimistic forecast, considering that the closest thing to the robots we have now are cars and there are about 15 million cars sold a year. So this projection is a bit optimistic. However, Tesla announced that already by the end of the year, thousands of humanoid robots will be working in the fab. Hey, awesome day. Hi, Bob. See, that's the most important part, that them working in the factories, right? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this, guys. Just look at it. That's how it used to be. Now it's different, but I'm going to let her continue. Back in 1970s, 20 million Americans were employed in manufacturing. Look. Back in 1970, 20 million Americans were employed in manufacturing, over 20% of the total workforce. Over 20% of the total workforce. Today, that number has halved to about 10 million, and humanoid robots will disrupt it even further. What there we go. And it'll be all right, guys. You go out and find new jobs. Stop being a normie. Go out and create value in other areas of life. We adapt and evolve. That's a part of it. But I know how you guys are going to do. But I'm talking to the small select few who don't have blood of the machine and go smashing computers and go smashing sewing machines because they're robots. See, people have always been like that, fearful of sewing machines, cotton gin. Like they went to go destroy those techs because they were like, these robots are destroying our livelihood. So again, you're still going to have those same problems. And it's nothing new. Robots is just a new thing, but it's always been there. What differentiates Tesla from other robotic companies is their efforts in autonomous driving software and, of course, custom silicon. Any navigation in the real world requires lots of processing power at age to process vast amount of real-world data. They will enable this processing with the hardware 4 and AI5 chips, which will be both coming to robots and cars. That works for now, but in my opinion, when they reach a decent volume with humanoid robot sales, they could optimize this chip for the humanoid robot specifically to get to the smaller area, smaller cost, smaller power consumption, because obviously car and robot have different power budgets and they can cut down some costs with that. Actually, we can conclude a lot from this event. First of all, all the investments Tesla were making over the years in their autonomous driving software, robotics, and especially in custom silicon like Dodge, like the hardware 3, hardware 4, it's all eventually coming up to, in a single picture and it's all paying off. And I'm certain that great companies have to reinvent themselves. You know, I love I love that. Great companies have to reinvent themselves and Tesla has been pushing the edge. And then also we still have products in the meantime. We still have the car and we still have the energy department. That's current. That's running. That's even proven itself to be an actual good return on investment when it comes down to the energy storage. So that will hold us over until this time comes to fruition. Now, is the stock going to sort of 30,000, 40,000? No, but that's what people who I want the money now want. But is the stock going to go down in value? Definitely, for sure. For sure. But I'm going to be a part of purchasing that bad boy. 
have that Tesla is coming up with a new revenue streams. Otherwise, you end up like Nokia, who missed smartphone, or like Intel, who missed the mobile chip market when Apple came to them, you know? This happened many times to great companies. But I also love seeing autonomous driving coming to life. I'm really fascinated by this, because now we don't have to take care of cars. Cars can take care of themselves, you know, when you buy a car or rent a car, it can just drive itself to you. When I was in San Francisco, I saw lots of Waymo driveless cars outside. And you know, they're different from a typical car aesthetics because there are lots of lighters and sensors, and it just looks bizarre. Tesla does way better job here. This looks like the future. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'm pretty sure- It looks like Apple. Sure, over the next decade, we will see robots everywhere. In service, in hotels and restaurants, of course, in the fabs. Sorry for the sound. And this will be, of course, enabled by sensors, by improvements in sensors, silicon, and AI. Let me know your thoughts on this event. In yeah, I, my, my thoughts on the event is they're going to deliver. My thoughts on the whole entire thing is they always deliver. They always deliver high quality product. They might miss on a couple of services and products that they're trying to get out of, but in the long run, they win. It's electric, everybody. Everyone loves to hate Tesla. Like, share, subscribe, support the channel, and hit that notification bell so you guys can get this hot electricity. I'll see you in the next one.